Was it worth the three hour runtime? It was worth every goddamn second. That's America's ass. Hi guys, welcome to Beards Eye View. This is going to be my spoiler filled review for Avengers Endgame. Yes, spoilers all the way through here, guys. Make sure you've checked out the movie first. Uh, if you want to see a spoiler free review of my star rating for the movie, Click the link above my head to be taken straight to it, but this video is spoilers all the way through. Before we begin, make sure that you give me a thumbs up if you like the video, comment down below and subscribe and make sure you ring that bell to be notified any time I do a video. Get in start back like straight away, uh, just kick in with it, get it done. It even like looked really thin as well, like which was great, um, and he just lost everything. He just he's done. He like he took his little thing off, gave it to Cap as like I'm, I'm fucking done, and then. Killing Thanos as well, just like straight up like, off the bat. I didn't expect that to happen. Just going to where his planet was, cutting off the gauntlet from his arm, and then cutting off his head if they realised they couldn't get the stones back because he used the stones to destroy the stones, and he just cut his head off and said, I went for the head. And and that whole thing goes towards Thor, just kind of like losing everything as well. He just he gets fat, just becomes fat Thor, lives in this new place called New Asgard, this like kind of little like harbour town, and. It's because of that he realised he fucked up and he just feels like shit all the time. And this film is kind of like a slow burner, I would say. Um, it's the the first half it takes a little bit of time to get going, but as I said in my other review, it never gets boring. Like the first half is all about the quantum realm. Ant Man comes back and they all spend the time like perfecting the quantum realm jumps with the pin particle and the suits and everything, so they can get jumps, so they can go back in time to get the Infinity Stones and. I love that entire thing. There was rumours that it was going to be something to do with time jumping and you know time space and all the blah 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 like shit and quantum realm stuff. And they they used it to a lot of perfection really. That they were managed to go back to all these other little points in different films, and it was so much fun seeing things like the Avengers movie, the first Avengers movie, Thor: The Dark World, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One, in different perspectives at different points. Like just after they capture Loki, then they're just watching it happen and getting him up and taking him down with the Tesseract, and they're trying to get hold of it at the same time. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, where they just knock Quill unconscious to get hold of the Power Stone. The one that was hard was like Dark World, because when Thor and Rocket got there to get the Ether out of Jane, he sees his mum, and it's just like, well, I can't leave her, and my mum dies today, and he, she, you know, they have a moment together, which is really great. Um, and at the end of the moment, once they got the ether and everything, just as about to leave, he gets Mjolnir and off he goes. So now he's got Stormbreaker and Mjolnir that gets used later on in the battle. That is cool. And um, Stark having a kid, like Morgan, as he said, he, was, he had a kid called Morgan. He has his little girl, and it's brilliant. That him and Pepper are kind of like done with everything, and they finally get the, him kind of on side and back into it and everything, which is great. The Hulk thing as well is also awesome. Professor Hulk is kind of like a blend of everything, and it's. It's fun, I mean, it's kind of annoying to see like full on Hulk get going and everything, but it was still fun to have him there, like just this perfect marriage of the two, and they kind of sorted their shit out, and yeah, that was that was cool. Oh, when Cap and Stark go further back in time to like the 70s, and Cap um, sees uh, Peggy like just so close to her, and then Stark has this moment with his dad as well, where they're trying to get hold of the Tesseract again. Yeah, that was. That was, again, a lot of good fan service, a lot of good moments for these characters as well. The Stan Lee cameo, that was funny. Um, they were in the 1970s and you just see him driving by to say, make, make peace, not war, and it just says, enough said on his um, license plate. Yeah, great cameo. We've only got one more now, guys. One more. I do like the fact that we get to see so many characters that we weren't expecting to see, like Thor's mum, like Loki gets an appearance, he disappears with the time st with the Tesseract, and that's all awesome. There's loads of these other characters that all keep popping up that are either dead or not around anymore, or we haven't used them in a while, and just... Again, it was so much fan service in this film to see all these little moments in a different angle with different, like, different ways of the characters, and... It just really well built. Considering it's a time jumping type thing, which is always a difficult thing to handle, the Russo brothers handled it really well. A friend of mine said about the whole Loki thing, when he used the Tesseract to disappear, does that create another timeline where he could still be alive and doing something else? I don't know whether they move that forward into the Disney Plus TV series that are going on about. I don't know. Black Widow. Oh, I didn't expect her to go. I really didn't expect her to go at all. Just they got to Voromir and getting the, um, as soon as they got to Voromir, I thought, well, how are they getting out of this? Someone's got to die to get that soul stone. They meet Red Skull as well, and they, they try to kill like kill each other off, and it's just and they try to sacrifice each other, and it's not happening, and they're hanging off the end, and then she just kicks out and drops down and fucking dies, and Hawkeye gets the soul stone, and ah, oh, gut wrenching. I didn't expect that to happen at all. I really didn't, and 
it sucked for Hawkeye. It gives him a hell of a more layering as a character as well. And I don't know whether they're going to use him anymore. I don't think they will. But it, it really drove him, which was awesome. When they finally get all the Infinity Stones as well, that they, they get some kind of Iron Man gauntlet thing put together, which is so cool. And they get Hulk to use it to try and get everybody back, um, which does work. Um, they, they find out that everybody's back and everything. Obviously, they hear like their radio channels and everything, and like they see all the birds and like, things like that. They know that they've done it, and then Thanos just attacks the, the Avengers mansion because Thanos halfway through has figured out everything by like recordings from Nebula and just then switching out old Nebula with the new Nebula with the old Nebula, and then just she's going in and fucking shit up as well. And Thanos just comes in with everything he's got and just attacking them and blowing them up, and then. It's, it really starts get, to get going then. It kicks into this final epic showdown that, as I've said in my other review, goes down as probably the best showdown that has ever been put to screen. They're basically just trying to get hold of the gauntlet, get it in and, you know, snap everything back to normal and all this kind of stuff because, they, you know, if they get hold of that, they can stop all the bad guys, basically Thanos and everybody that, you know, follows him. And you've got Thor and Cap and Iron Man going at it with Thanos where everybody's trying to get hold of his gauntlet and everything. It's so epic. I did like that quick thing as well that Thor did when he's got obviously both hammers. He just he flicks Mjolnir in the air and just bats it with Stormbreaker. Oh, so awesome. Cap is worthy. Cap is fucking worthy. I knew he was worthy. He's either you're worthy or you're not. I knew when he moved in Age of Ultron, I think he's worthy. He's fucking worthy. When it swung back into his hand, I was like... Yes! It was so freaking cool. Again, more fan service, but oh, it was brilliant. It was so cool. The the Captain America Mjolnir shield combo fight and stuff was just so freaking cool. There was a moment I thought Cap was going to die. Like, it was just down to him and Thanos at this point in time, and he was getting his shield battered to shit, and I thought that was it. Like, Cap was going to go. And then you hear Falcon, and you see like Strange's like circle thing appear. Black Panther comes out, and then more of the circles start to appear. More of the characters coming out with the Avengers music going over the top. All of Thanos' baddies are heading to them. And then suddenly we're getting all of these characters, every single Avenger, every single character that we know and love, all pushing through these time portals, all coming out with the music over the top, and just the biggest assemble of all these characters, and then. And finally, he gets Mjolnir back and he says, Avengers assemble and charging in and off they go and a massive battle ensues. It was so epic. That was like the time, the first time I filled up. Just watching this unfold was just, it was an absolute nerdgasm and I loved every freaking second of it. Even during the battles, they still gave characters their moments. They gave Stark and Spidey like their little moments. They gave Strange and Iron Man their kind of moments and whatnot. Cap had other moments with people like um, Ant Man and the Wasp had their little moments. I love how they just they managed to just pepper this stuff in all the while with this absolute destruction going on. It was it, again, it was really good writing. The one thing I will say about Captain Marvel, she is in this film, of course, and she is used very well, but she isn't overused, and that's why I think it's amazing. They didn't overuse their powerfulest Avengers. She came through the atmosphere and destroyed Thanos' ship, and that was awesome. And she was in it at the start with certain bits and bobs, but she wasn't overused, which was great. Because I didn't want her, being as she's so new to the universe, just come in, wreck shop, and leave. And it's like, well, I don't feel anything enough for that character to make that well, you know, worth it. So, yeah, she was used really well, but she wasn't overused, and I'm glad of that. The final moments of this battle was... Oh, just amazing. They, they, it's scrambling to get the gauntlet away from Thanos. He finally gets it on him, and it's down to Stark trying to pull it off him and everything, and it looks like he's going to be knocked away, and Thanos is just standing there going, I am inevitable. Clicks his fingers, and nothing happens. Turns it, no stones, and then you turn back to Stark, and there they are, all the stones inside his own hand, saying, I am Iron Man. Click, done. All the bad guys start disappearing, and then Thanos just slowly but surely disappears and fades into nothingness and oh what an epic way to do it it's the right move i think stark is definitely the guy to do it but unfortunately we know where that leads afterwards stark dies um stark dies and this was one of the moments i, I cried uh, I, I did cry at this it was gut-wrenching it was horrible seeing Rhodey and um spider-man uh, pepper there even thor and cap as well just all of them just just there witnessing him slowly just die because of the click it's just it, it just affects his system and he dies and it's it sucks it really sucks but it makes sense for the character he started this universe so he ends it here 
and yeah, I think a great way for the character to go out. He managed to get his little life with his wife and his child, and he was able to do the thing and lay down the wire, as Cap always said, and did the right thing, and he saved the entire universe. The second time that I cried was following not long after, which was his funeral, Stark's funeral. He has a little kind of projection thing where he says, like, you know, nice things to everybody, and then you just see it with the little proof that Tony Stark has a heart just floating out the river, and they're just all there. All the Avengers in their black suits, every single character, even the kid from Iron Man 3 is there as well, as you see. Every single one of them is all there, and that again got me, made me start crying. It, it, it really was emotional as hell. I do like the callback they had at the uh, funeral as well. Uh, we're happy sitting with Morgan and saying, you want to get some food? Because yeah, I want to get a cheeseburger. Because your, your father used to like cheeseburgers. That thing there where he was saved in Iron Man 1, and that's the first thing he did when he got himself an American cheeseburger. That, again, a lovely little reference there. So, I mean, that's like it for like most of the Avengers. Thor goes off with the Guardians, which means maybe he'll be in Guardians 3, which I'd assume. That I'd be totally fine with. It's a, a way of keeping Thor fresh and fun and interesting while not having to overuse him too much because he's part of another team. I, I like that. Um, obviously, Stark is gone. Black Widow is gone. Hawkeye's retired. Hulk, I think... I think maybe Hulk could be using maybe a cameo sort of process. Like, if someone needs some kind of intelligent... Like, uh, like opinion in the future in different movies, they'll go to Banner. So they could use him in that way again, it's not being overused. I think that would work quite well for that character. When the Guardians are leaving, he's searching for Gamora because he, he, he sees her in the battle, but it's not the same Gamora, it's the one from the past. It's not the actual Gamora because she's dead. So she doesn't really know who he is properly, and I don't know what happened after the snap. Did she either, she either dusted away or she buggered off and they've now got to try and find her? But again, maybe that, I, I really don't know there, but I think they're going to go with that in Guardians 3, but hopefully that's a way of bringing Gamora back into it. Uh, the final moments of the movie, um, it was it was given to Cap, and rightfully so, obviously with Stark gone, Cap's, you know, you give the final moments to him, and he's there in the quantum suit, and the, basically he's taking the stones back, and Mjolnir back, to their original timelines, putting them back beforehand so that nothing goes out of place, everything continues as it should, um, and he's basically gone for as long as he needs, but he's back in five seconds, and he doesn't come back with his time. He doesn't come back after the count, and straight away you can kind of see the Winter Soldier like knows. He's looking at go, I, I, I see what's coming here, and like Falcon's like, get him back to hold, get him back, and what's going on? And he's like, guys, and he points over, and by the river is this old man sitting on a bench, and it's Cap. He's an old man. He's lived his life out. He said, I'm gonna, I went to, I decided to go and get that life that Tony kept telling me to get. And he looks a bit like Clint Eastwood as an old person, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, it, they gave him that moment, and uh, Falcon's just like, well, did we always need a Captain America. He goes, yeah, you're right. And he brings out his shield and goes, try it on. He even turns to Winter Soldier, like to Bucky, and just nods to give his seal of approval. So we don't get Winter Soldier as Cap, we get Falcon as Cap. And I'm totally fine with it. He puts it on, and he said it looks good, and... It's great, you see that he's married, he goes, you want to tell me about the girl? And he goes, no, no I don't. The last moment of Avengers Endgame is just going into this house, and you see Cap and Peggy just together, dancing to some music, they kiss, and it just slowly but surely just fades to black. Cap got his happy ending, he got the girl in the end, he had the life that he always wanted, and that's it, Cap is done and dusted, Stark is gone, everything is over and they wrapped up all these characters and all these storylines for so long so damn perfectly that I don't know how they're ever going to top something this epic. One thing I actually really like about this movie as well is how all the rumours going round about them introducing something like Kang the Conqueror or Galactus or having end credit scenes to introduce X-Men and Fantastic Four and stuff like that, all that stuff like circling around and they didn't do any of that. And you know what? I'm actually really glad they didn't do any of that because I think it's just a nice way to finalise this entire era, the Infinity Saga as they're calling it, this way. And you can use those characters at any other point, introduce them at any other point, and that's absolutely fine. So I I'm glad they didn't use that because it kind of would have maybe taken the shine off a little bit and the focus away from the characters that we've come to love. So guys, that's my spoiler talk video done for Avengers Endgame. Um, I'm probably thinking about maybe doing another video at some point with like easter eggs and references because there's so much going on in this movie that I can't possibly talk about absolutely all of it because the video would be like three hours long, it would take forever to get through it. So I might do like an easter egg and references type video at some point 
but yeah, this is my spoiler talk video. I, I hope that you enjoyed the film. I hope you enjoyed my video. Like, comment, subscribe down below. Uh, social media, any of these down below. Links are all in the description. And I'll see you soon.